It's time to reach for the greatest heights with the brand new Height FA12 Heights budget option fan. A little bit of spec information. The FA12 is a 120 mm class fan, 25 mm thick fluid dynamic fairing, 1.5 amps, maximum speed is 1,500 RPM, airflow is 72 CFM, 1.6 mm of H2O, and noise level is 28 decibels. First up in testing is my case simulation test. This can be used in several key different ways, but the most important for you, my viewers, is what size case do you actually plan on buying? So this assumes a front-to-back airflow in a air cooler. So the 6s mark is for a mini ITX case that has that front-to-back airflow to that air cooler. Or a case where you figure it's got room for 120mm class fan in front of the CPU socket. So it's fairly close. It also is, can be used as an analysis for a short throw distance, like bowling air from the bottom of your case up towards your GPU, the 6-inch mark would be very applicable to that. Then we've got the 9-inch mark. The 9-inch mark is a compact tower. Think a case that can hold 220mm class fans, or one that is just large enough to hold a full ATX motherboard with a full ATX motherboard length GPU. No extra room beyond that. Again, front to back airflow. These distances are the distance right from the uh, those front fans to the CPU socket. Then we have the 11 inch mark. The 11 inch mark is a compact tower. Think Meshify 2C, uh, Corsair 5000 years or uh, 550D, all fit into that uh, size case. Think a case that can hold 320 millimeter class fans or a standard 360 AIO. Then at the 14.5 inch mark, we've got the truly large towers that can hold 340 millimeter class fans or track design torrent. So creating a baseline comparison, we've got my control fan. The control fan is based three parts A12 to five to one part A14, creating a blended 130 millimeter class fan to compare other fans against. So this fan does not actually exist in reality. So the FA12 is underperforming actually quite a bit, uh, but at the six and the nine, it's doing okay. But bigger cases, I would get something else. How about at 100% PW fan signaling? Well, the case is holding true here, where it's just underperforming a little bit. How does the fan do against other fans? Well, not great, if I'm honest. It's a flat line, but it's a flat line steeply down. And in larger cases, it can just be ignored. But if you're looking at a case that's 6 or 9 inches, it does well enough to really consider it. Otherwise, I'd steer you towards something else. How about at 100% PW fan signaling? Well, once again, my statement that I said before is holding true. Mind, it is doing better than the Tough Fan 12 Pro, so it's got that going for it, but I would largely steer you away from buying this as a case fan. And now, noise level versus air speed. At the 9 inch mark, the 9 inch mark was chosen because fans that tend to drop off tend to drop off between the 9 and the 11 inch mark, so there's still enough air speed in most fans to get a good data set. Well, we see here that the FA12 has a little bit of a harmonic frequency at the 20, 30, 40% uh, PWM signal mark. It's, it gets quite a bit noisier, but it's at a low enough sound level that it's not too much of a concern before it resets and just has a nice smooth curvature. Uh, so I'm not overly concerned about that harmonic within this fan. Uh, it's performing adequately. It's on the low side, but it's not like the worst. We've taken a look at like the T30. Uh, it's significantly worse just as a comparison point. Taking a look at the same data, but this time with Sone. Sone is a different way to look at sound measurements, and it helps exemplify higher noise levels uh, versus making low noise levels look much closer together. So it really exemplifies how the FA12 um, looked much worse here, but in reality it's not that much noisier and most people would actually find it acceptable. Next we have performance through my CPU air cooler if you wanted to use this fan on a cooler for some reason. 
uh, the control is the same control. It's three parts A12X5 to one part A14. And the first graph here on the left side is meters per second versus RPM. So this is a blade efficiency graph. It is how effective this fan is at blowing air through a cooler. And it is more efficient than my control fan. So that's pretty cool. And the right graph here is meters per second for noise in decibels. So here it's underperforming actually quite a bit. So it is noisier than my control fan, which isn't great for it. But how does it compare against other fans I've tested? Well, the FA12 is towards the bottom. It's not a terrible result, 1.3 meters per second. So over here, we have performance at a specific airspeed through my specific cooler with my specific CPU, the 11700K. Again, the cooler is the Noctua U12A. So I did a bunch of testing to find what equivalent air speeds through the cooler equate to what approximate wattages. And those wattages are accurate within about five watts on each side. So at 1.3, that's 190 watt CPU with that cooler on that CPU. So that's not a bad result. Mind, there are better fans out there like the Atel Oxygen 5 at 1.6, but how about at 100% PDO and fan singling? Well, here's the limitation for this fan. It only spins at 1,500 RPM. And compared to other fans that in that RPM range, it's blowing actually slightly more air through the cooler, but it is also noisier than quite a few. The TLS-12, the white edition, is quite a bit quieter than it actually. Almost five, actually four decibels. So, but it is also 0.1 meters per second less. So you can't win everything. Um, but there are definite limitations to that particular fan because it just is lacking that top end. And with regard to uh, airspeed versus decibel ratings through that CPU air cooler, it's sitting towards the bottom of the graphs with the subsample selection that I've uh, chosen for this graph. So it's doing okay, it's staying in the group, but it's a little bit on the noisy side. And if we take a look at the data in Sone, well, you can see that it is, starts to deviate fairly quickly as uh, air speeds increase. It just uh, doesn't have as smooth a line and, or climb as steeply. kind of levels out quite a bit more than many other fans. But again, I would call it tolerable. All right, this is the box for the Height Flow A12. Uh, very basic, orange, pretty good packaging, actually, uh, especially considering the price of this fan at $22. So overall, pretty impressed with that. Let's do a quick look-see over the fan design. So a few notable notes. The edge distance between the blades and the sides is fairly close, especially given this fan's price point. Most fans in this price have a wider gap. This is a nine-blade fan, so that should offer very good pressure performance. However, it does indicate a worse noise profile. More blades tend to equal more noise. The struts on it are very thin. And they've got a little bit of an angle to them, which does help direct airflow as well as not obstruct the blades too much and reduces the overall noise as the fan's blades bypass over it. Just a little bit less obstruction there. The back of the housing design is very interesting. It's got these gaps in it. Um, no real reason for behind it that I can personally think of as an engineer. However, I would see it as a cost-saving method because it just means that there's less material in it. But that's also probably why this fan has several limitations, meaning it's maximum peak RPM. This fan is not designed to go uh, faster. There won't be a high-speed version of it. Back to the front, it's got little rubber grommets that are built right into the, the sleeve there. Got the H imprint for height, which is pretty cool to see rather than a sticker. It guarantees a nice placement. Uh, this isn't a white fan, so it's black and gray. So hopefully that fits your aesthetic. Uh, if you like this or if you just don't care, it's also fine that way. And the other basic piece of information, it's got a little bit of curvature on the front to be in a little bit of an inlet. However, the blades do sit fairly close to the front. So in a pull configuration or up close against maybe a filter or anything like that, it's going to be a bit noisier than, let's say, the a 12 x 5 which is... And the last set of graphs are CFM testing, blowing air through a tube. So the FA12 here on the blade efficiency graph, RPM versus CFM is underperforming compared to my control fan, so it's not doing great in this test. And with regard to noise versus airspeed, it's doing pretty terribly, if I'm honest. Well, how does it compare against other fans? Well, here it's sitting well, well, well towards the bottom, so it's not a great result. Let's move on. At 100%, it's still not doing well, but it's sitting in actually 
it's not even sitting in line with other fans that sit in at the same RPM. So clearly this fan does not like this test. And it shows in the noise versus CFM graph where it's just far away from this group of other fans that perform fairly well. Okay, last up is the value proposition. So this comes in a triple pack for $25. So that makes it $8.33 per fan, assuming you need three fans. If you don't need three fans, that hurts the value proposition of this fan because then you're left with extra fans that you're not really using for anything. So the FA12 actually sits well towards the top at the six inch mark in my case simulation test. It's not at the top, but it's good enough. At 100% PDL and fan signaling, well, it also sits into that good enough category, but there are other fans that are just a significantly better value, like the TLG12 or the TLE12B Extreme at the 11 inch mark. Well, it's moving back in more kind of middle of the pack. And at 100%, it's kind of sitting there the same way. It's not sitting at the top, it's sitting in the middle. And I do apologize for the the case simulation test. Uh, the 100% the graphs are not in uh, uh, low to high order. It's just a limitation with my Excel template. Okay, CFM testing. Well, the FA12 is sitting smack dab in the middle. It's actually kind of on the low end because, well, the good ones are really good in terms of value. And at 100%, well, the FA12 is, again, sitting where it is. How about through the CPU or cooler? Well, at noise normalized results at the, that 11 decibels, it is sitting well towards the top. Again, uh, value proposition is performance per dollar, so it isn't raw performance value. At 100%, it's still sitting towards the top, but there are just other fans that are significantly better value than it. So once again, value proposition is not raw performance. If you're looking for best bang for the buck, that's where we take a look at this um, value proposition. Otherwise, I recommend that you actually take a look at the earlier graphs to figure out what kind of performance needs you actually, well, need. And here's the raw data. This raw data does belong to me and my channel. If you would like to use it for your own personal use, you may go ahead and do so. However, if you're going to use it in sort of written journal publication, anything like that, that has any sort of monetary uh, needs, you must reference me and my channel and contact me first. Now that that is out of the way, what do I think about this fan? Well, I think the value is overall pretty good. It looks all right. It's a very basic fan, if all things considered. Um, I'm sort of in that wait and see category. Height is a fairly new brand. They've made computer cases, but they haven't made any fans yet. So um, it's sort of waiting to see how well they last. And unfortunately, this is a limitation with my channel right now. I'd love to do add longevity testing as well, to, as well as other testing in the future. And it's viewers like you that will enable me to make that possible by joining as a YouTube member or as a Patreon. That money goes directly to supporting this channel and enabling me to do all of that testing as well as upgrading my whole testing methodology to its reversion three, which I view as its final, like ultimate form. Um, and I understand that not everybody can afford that, and that's perfectly okay, but hitting that subscribe button really does go a long way in gaining this channel's traction. So um, I appreciate each and one of you that uh, uh, hits that subscribe button, and I appreciate all of my supporters on Patreon, or as a YouTube members, you guys rock. It's really coming a long way. And just recently, I was able to purchase a radiator to allow to add that testing as time goes forward, just adding it into uh, another column here. Uh, so far, it looks like that airspeed through my CPU or cooler and the radiator are very similar. So until I have a test system, I may not publish those results as a separate graph. Uh, anyways, if you got suggestions for fans for me to take a look at, improvements that this chat that videos can make or anything like that, I'm welcome to taking those suggestions. Um, Anyways, I hope all of you have a great day. Thank you for joining me here on Computer Tech and More, and I hope to see you next time.